Welcome to the beehive. Today is a busy bee type of day in the beehive. I am going to be making scrub caps for my daughter-in-law and her friends. I'm going to be making binding and attaching binding uh, with the sewing machine and then it'll stay piled until I'm ready to start hand stitching it down. So it's a real kind of a busy bee type of day here. It is um, beautiful outside right now anyway. There's no wind. We nearly, I felt like I was Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz the last few days. But uh, this morning there's no wind, which is welcomed, very much welcomed. I hope everything's going for you okay. I hope you're all healthy. Um, it is, um, it's a scary world out there right now, but we're in here together, right? And so um, I just wanted to share a few things before I get to work. It's, um, there isn't going to be any dramatic finishes. I did go through the house this morning and put out a few of my 4th of July decorations. It has always been one of my favorite holidays, uh, mainly because um, there was never any family drama around 4th of July <laughs> when I was growing up. There was never any family drama. <laughs> our, our, uh, my growing up household was, uh, how would I call that household? You know, my parents were um, very, very supportive of their families, both of my parents. And so the door in our household was a revolving door. Many, many, many people have uh, came in and out of our home and lived with us from short periods of time to extensive periods of time. And so there was always chaos. Uh, not necessarily a bad chaos, but there was always chaos. And somehow, Fourth of July was one of those holidays where because the weather was usually good, you're outside. And so um, the, the, I, I just always loved it. Usually the weather was good, it was fun, picnics, family together, playing games, and no drama, no drama. <laughs> and so here we are hard to believe that we're at that precipice in the year where we're halfway through. Oh my gosh, what a year. Well, today in the Beehive I wanted to start off with a few, uh, a little bit of show and tell. <clears throat> you know, I have that pile of fabrics that I chose for the scrub caps and um, I'm really excited about that. Uh, seeing how they turn out, seeing if I can remember how to make them again. <laughs> and um, because the last video you saw that I um, took you to the quilt basket in Bend, Oregon, I forgot to share with you uh, the little bit of haul that I walked out of. Not only my quilts, I already showed you that, but I actually saw some fabric that I just thought would be so cute. And the reason I bought them was their fat quarters was um, I thought they would be good finishing fabrics for some of my cross stitch projects. And uh, so I, I just love the colors of them. So let me show them to you. I'm not even sure. I can't even see where, who this is by. But um, here's kind of a, it's like a, not really a teal, like a soft blue-gray snowflake. Here's kind of a retro design with sparkle. This looks like a Christmas list written with a little bit of gold, black, and red. Here's a little bit of black script talking all about the Christmas holiday. This one is fun. It is a plaid of gray, red, black, and white with snowflakes. And here's an alternate to that black one of red with the holiday script. 
and then here's a, like a candy cane stripe with a kind of a pink, red, and white. So I think those are going to be great fabrics to do some finishing with my cross stitch projects, which you have to go over to Stitch Roadies to see that. Um, one of my friends, you know, the thing I'm going to miss most about our changing world is travel. After all, we are quilt roadies or stitch roadies. We are on the road. And I think we have adjusted fairly well to the changing environment for now. But if I spend any time thinking long term, I, my heart aches. My heart aches. And the reason being is that traveling opens your eyes. It opens your eyes. I will never forget that when we were in one of the South American countries um, a couple of years ago, I was shocked that in that particular country, the citizens were all um, categorized uh, by their um, economic, I guess, status in the country and were given a number. And the numbers range from one to six. And depending on what number you resided in, it uh, depicted what area of town you could live in, you know. And I would have never known that had I not gone there. And so I think um, travel not only opens your mind to wanting, uh, to not only feeling uh, somewhat blessed about uh, your situation, but also how different the world is and how people are dealing with different hardships. And so when I go through that, you know, that circling, waxing and waning of um, woes me, woes me, and, uh, and I allow myself those moments of not recognizing how blessed I am because that's part of the process of recognizing how blessed you are. Uh, and then I see something either on the news or in my travels or um, in media uh, that give me pause and make me think, oh, I have not a thing, a thing to worry about or complain about or feel sorry for myself about. And then I'll go along, and then all of a sudden I'll have this little moment of self-pity. And I allow that because that's the process that makes me come around and go, Okay, wah, wah, move on, you know, and pick myself up in my big girl panties and, and move forward. So where was I going with this? Oh, one of the most fabulous parts of traveling is the people you meet. And a few years ago, I met a woman who, uh, and I've told you this before, I was very much, very much, uh, I could feel the energy, the creativeness. Um, you know, it's kind of like um, when you're, um, when you're, when you see someone like giving a speech and you're like, oh, Oh, they're speaking to me, and you feel like it. You're at a rally, and you feel energized. Well, in the stitching world, I felt that with this particular person. And I knew, I knew that someday I would be buying her pattern. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just knew it. She's, she was just a whole bundle of creativeness. And I, um, if there's one thing I recognize, it's it's creative people in whatever forms they are creative. And um, her name is Ariane, and she lives in New York City. Now, I met her at a Sus Bargo um, 
workshop and man she she just blew me out of the water with her uh, stitching creativeness and her ability to take um, Sue Spargo's uh, workshops and elevate them into her own creativeness, which is, which is what Sue wants. She, she doesn't want you just to do a replica of what she's doing. I don't know how many times I would ask Sue, well, um, what do you think I should do here? And her little sweet self would say, well, what do you want to do? Or what would you like it to look like? I want it to look just like yours! No, no, I know. That's because this is not someone who is creative in that way. But Ariane was. And so now I am so happy that she um, is... She already had uh, her Etsy shop that where she designed gorgeous, gorgeous uh, jewelry. Of course, that jewelry uh, isn't really, uh, you wouldn't really wear it with this kind of t-shirt, but <laughs> but she has um, brought out patterns and she'll be bringing out more. And she uses all of, uh, she just uses a lot of Sue's um, products and, and threads. I have to tell you, when I first saw her first, uh, I think this is her first um, independent pattern, uh, I was sold, mainly because I want to make a needle roll. I am having a hard time keeping track of my needles and, um, you know, the size, because with um, stitching, you use different size needles for different size threads, for different looks that you want. And keeping them all Keeping track of them all is a job in and of itself. And so Sue had come out with needle rolls that were designed to help you do that. But this is the thing. I'm all about the cover, you know, and trying to find the cover that I want for my needle roll. It just wasn't uh, speaking to me. I, I wanted... I just wanted something different. I, that's just where I was at. So when I saw Ariane's design for a needle roll, I was all about it. Because I grew up on the ocean. You know, I was born on a beach. I grew up on the beach. I uh, grew up with my dad rowing us on the estuaries and then sailing on the Pacific Ocean. I, I mean, I'm all about the ocean. And so when I saw this needle roll, I'll show you this. I had to have it. I had to have it. And it has, um, this is the needle roll right here. This is another bag. But this little needle roll has a sea otter a sea otter. Oh my gosh, it is absolutely, isn't he adorable? I don't know how many sea otters I saw when I was growing up. I mean, they're floating all around and um, they'd be so cute if they had their baby floating on top of them or they were eating something. Or, you know, they connect up together. They're like a real community. And um, so there was no way I was not going to be making this cover for the needle roll. And this pattern is the most extent. Oh, look at him. Look at him. Isn't he cute? Uh, this pattern is the most extensive pattern I have seen. And I am all about this because... <laughs> I just, I need, I need a step by step. I'm a real visual learner, so anything that gives me more pictures and explains it better uh, is my cup of tea. So just so you know, I will link her um, Etsy shop 
in the description box. So don't ask me a lot of questions about where can I find it. It will be in that description box. You can tell me how much you like it, but um, I'll give you the link down there. You don't have to do. You don't have to worry. Well, this was a box of quilty kindness, but not only for me, but for you too. And it's from Stephanie. Bless, bless, bless you for not for wanting to pass on the kindness because that is truly what we need in this world. We need more kindness, and. Even though her card says, thank you so much, Stephanie, I thank you so much. I, so I'm going to just show it to you. First, look at this mug. <gasps> Isn't that the bomb oh my gosh it is so sweet oh. it had all kinds of little goody things in there and then a bag oh my gosh there's a bag of bee fabric and um, this needle minder is so freaking cute. Look at the needle minder. Oh. And then the fabric. And you know, I'll link uh, where this needle minder comes from because it's from an Etsy shop and I I just like to re I like to um, support those independent um, independent entrepreneurs that's what we call it now I have seen these before at quilt market um, I've seen these before at quilt market but, but I've never done one so I am looking forward to the trying this out it says it's skill level beginner <laughs> That would be me. It's a kit that includes a quilt board and instruction and foam backing and a hanger bracket on making this quilt board B. So if I am remembering, and I can see kind of how to do it on the back instructions, is that you have the design on the foam board, and then you put your fabric, and you just kind of stuff the fabric down into the board until it creates this awesome picture. That'll be something fun to do. But this, she knows I like Sashiko. And this is from Japan. It's, um, now this is one of those ones that you have to be careful not to spill your drink on because the marks will disappear. But I love that. Um, and it's uh, a Sashiko design with a bee flying around in his bee trail. And see the back of the fabric actually has the printed. So there's absolutely no way it's a running stitch. And there's no way that it's not going to come out absolutely beautiful. Because um, the marks are there. You're going to be perfectly spaced. It says it was made in Japan. And... Um, but I don't know where you'd get this here in the States. Oh, and then get a load of this. Oh. Look at this cross stitch. Now I get to take this down to the cross stitch room. Isn't that cute? The beekeeper. The frosted pumpkin stitchery. 
Seriously Cute Cross Stitch Patterns by Amanda and Ashley. Oh my gosh. So here's the thing. Stephanie is passing on the kindness because she sent a jelly roll. A jelly roll. Moda Fabrics. Oh. And this is, let's see, does it say Moda Fabrics? Oh, it's just the, it's wrapped, you know, with that yard, um, that ruler ribbon. Uh, and this, it doesn't say the line that it is, but it kind of, oh, it has, I think it has bees on it. Yeah, and flowers. It looks like 30s prints. And a book. Look at this. Martin Gale, published by Martin Gale. The Splendid Sampler 2 by Pat Sloan and Jane Davidson. Isn't that great? Another hundred blocks from a community of quilters. So here's the deal. Stephanie gave me this book and this jelly roll to give to one of you. So, if you're interested in this jelly roll and book, you must be a subscriber to the Quilt Roadies and leave a comment that says, I like jelly. Jelly. Have jelly in your sentence. J-E-L-L-Y. So, I think this is going to be awesome. This is like, look at the quilt on the back. Oh, oh wow, it's just so cute. Oh my gosh, look at this. My happy place. Okay. One of you is going to get this. You're a sweetheart, Stephanie. Remember, leave in the comment the word jelly. Okay? So now I'm going to stop talking because I need to start working. And you can watch me work for a little while. I might actually say something while I'm working or might, might grumble. What I'm listening to though is um, the changeling and oh my gosh, the changeling is... Um, The Changeling is um, by Victor Laval, and it's a combination of, it, it has a little bit of creepiness to it, and it has a little bit of grim fairy tale feel to it, and those old Irish tales of changeling babies, you know. So, I, I haven't read that um, scary genre of books in a long, long time. I mean, years. But I got hooked the very first chapter. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be reading more of this guy's books. So hang in there. Enjoy. I'm going to keep filming for a little bit uh, on what I'm doing up here. Um, and let's get some work done, huh?
take a few weeks off from doing something and you have to kind of re-educate yourself on how to do it. <laughs> and these um, uh, scrub caps are similar to making clothing, which has never been my... Uh, within my scope of talents. <laughs> I'm going to sew all the bands on because um, they're all sewn on with the straight stitch and then I'll change to my zigzag stitch to um, do the other seam. So this project of making scrub caps has um, gone into day two because it's, um, well for one thing it takes me a little bit longer to digest instructions and um, yeah, so there's, there's an issue there. You have to read the directions and you have to be able to absorb them. Uh, but I'm making progress and I should be maybe maybe a couple hours away. Look at this cute one. There's the band and there's the, the back. So these things fit like this. And then once I get this cord weaved through, they... They're for girls or men who have long hair, and so they tie. It's called a bouffant scrub cap, and um, I like them. I like them. They're they're nice, and you know my daughter-in-law works in the ER, so I think these are going to be great. A little bit of col colorfulness in a very gloomy area. Um, yeah, everybody's, uh, you don't come into the ER because you want to have a good time, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I love these fish. So all I'm doing today, this morning, is to um, sew a channel along the bottom so the bouffant part of this can be gathered up and tied and tuck the ponytail underneath. And then I'm using... Um, a safety pin to thread this through that channel and then it's done. And so there's going to be some colorful ER people. So that's where I am today. I woke up at 4.30 with my mind racing on all kinds of things and um, there's so much changes going on in the YouTube world and and uh, just thinking about how I want to spend my time and I definitely want to spend my time with you guys <laughs> you are so kind uh, you know to press that thumbs up and to leave me a comment um, you don't know how I, I appreciate that because it's kind of like uh, it, it for both of us, for you and for me, it's a it's kind of a one way uh, friendship because I I don't get to hear your answers till you make comments and you don't get to hear my responses until I comment back and um, so it is a it is a different. A different kind of existence and I know that some uh, some people especially on the floss tube side you see them dropping off uh, and closing their channels because um, it does it does feel different than if you're 
face to face and you can really gather up someone's emotions and hold it to you in real life than than um, in this format. But this is what we've got, and um, and I really appreciate all of you being here. So the other thing I wanted to ask you before I got it started with today's tasks is um, if you here on Quilt Roadies would like more uh, stitch with me. Uh, and the reason I ask that is because on, uh, on stitch roadies, <laughs> now I'm going to get, <laughs> I'm going to get confused. On stitch roadies, every so often I do a stitch with me where I'm just stitching and talking and, and there's times that I actually hear responses and I know they're coming, but um, on quilt roadies, I hardly have ever done that. And I started thinking about how much handwork I have and how awesome it would be if I had some company while I was stitching. So what I wanted to know, and if you could leave in the comments, if you would like, uh, you know, not every single time, but uh, sometimes if you want to just get your stitching out and stitch along on some handwork while I jibber-jabber. <laughs> because, you know, I spent my first grade year with tape on my mouth, so I have the ability to jibber-jabber. <laughs> Oh, but let me know if that type of um, video is appealing at all. And then maybe maybe once a week we'll do a stitch along. If the majority of people don't find that the least bit intriguing, <laughs> and I get it, um, then I'll just keep going along as I'm going. Um, but let me know. Let me know. So today I am finishing up my uh, scrub caps for my daughter-in-law and I am going to attempt to make a couple more masks, different kinds of masks, masks than I've made before for um, my nephew's two sons uh, because the masks they have are the Thai kind and it's kind of a, you know, Masks, uh, mask construction has evolved just like everything else in the sewing world has evolved. And um, I'm going to try to make masks with just the loop of elastic, which I've not done before, but I'm going to try that today. And then this afternoon, later this afternoon, I'll be spending... Um, some outdoor social distancing with um, some friends and I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to that. I am um, keeping my fingers crossed that, and I probably already said this in an earlier segment of this video, keeping my fingers crossed that my camping trip next week comes off that there aren't too many cases that the the campground has closed down but um, if it does I mean we have we have dealt there are people dealing with much more challenging things in their life than whether they get to go camping or not so stay tuned I'm gonna be sewing
And the way this works is you place this over your hair, you pull these tight, you tuck your ponytail underneath, and then you tie it back around. And it holds your hair and your ponytail out of your way when you're working on someone who really needs your help. Well, it's been a busy morning. I got all of the scrub caps done. Here they are. There's eight of them. And I just, I have to say, uh, if I was a nurse in the ER, I would want to be all about this color. Oh my gosh. I This one gives me a chuckle, this one with the fortune cookies. <laughs> But um, I'm happy to have those all ready to go. I'm going to bring them on our camping trip because I will be seeing my daughter-in-law. And um, I'm going to pass them off to her. And now I have moved on to mask making for my um, nephew's sons. Because they the masks they have are the ones that you tie in. I get it. We have been, as I've said before, we've been evolving in our mask making. And so I made them with this loop. You know, and if you, if these become too loose, you just twist the loop over your ear and it holds it tighter. But I had this fun Hogwarts, Hogwarts fabric, um, Quidditch. Quidditch Hogwarts fabric and so I thought the kids might like those masks because right now in our area it is a mandatory mask wearing in any public place and um, they are um, at their grandma's house uh, for the week. And so I thought they they're used to wearing masks because they're from California and that mask wearing has been a strict um, requirement down there. But now Oregon is also. Um, and so I thought, you know, if you have to wear a mask, it should be a fun mask, you know. And so I'm just sewing the second one. And once that's done, then I'm going to relax a little bit and think about uh, creating some binding. So I think I'm just going to wrap this uh, video up. It's going to take a lot of editing with all its little pieces for G. And um, there might, let's see, today um, we'll be heading off to camping so it might be a few days before we're back together again so please leave in the comments whether you would like to do have some um, stitch along um, stitch with me uh, videos on quilt roadies because I have so much handwork I don't know about you guys but I have so much handwork I need to get into my Sue Spargo stitching and I need to finish my buttermilk basin stitching I've got Sylvia Pippin Sashiko stitching I have applique I have hexes I have it all and so if there are some times where I can just relax and be sewing um, well, just jibber jabbing. I sure would like it, but I don't want to bore you guys either. But maybe you have a lot of stitching to do also, and we can hang around and talk about books and movies and new, new, um, like I saw, a, I saw a quilt today. It was a very, very simple quilt, but I, it was a scrap quilt, but I just loved it, and it's the first time I've been kind of excited about starting a whole new quilt top uh, in a while, because I have so much, so much, so much to do, and I keep dreaming, I keep dreaming about that flannel, flannel that was at the quilt basket that was so pretty, and we're coming up on, um, Next week would have been Quilter's Affair. Um, yeah, 
I would have been um, hosting two day-long, um, or was it three day-long uh, quilt, uh, uh, quilt to your wilt kind of things, you know, where you bring your own projects into my classroom and I give lots of support, emotional support and opinions <laughs> for day-long stitching. Oh, I was so looking forward to me see seeing old friends and new friends in that class. I uh, That's my favorite thing to do, that class. And, yeah... So, but you need to go over to um, the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show, and I'll put that link below, because they have all kinds of activities this week, and there are all kinds of activities sponsored by the Stitching Post for Quilters Affair Week that uh, you'll, you're going to want to check them out and stuff. And then, G and I are going to video our own, my own, mini quilt show for quilt show day um, since we don't get to have the regular quilt show and the sisters outdoor quilt show is having a fabulous virtual quilt show um, now naturally there won't be 1200 quilts because nobody can mail all those quilts but um, but it, they're doing the best they can and it's going to be fun and then next year Everyone wear your mask so next year we can be together because I need to have a meet and greet at Fika Coffee and, and have a good time with you guys. So keep stitching, working on those UFOs and those whips, and we'll see you next video. Thanks for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe on Quilt Roadies.